back to Bytes of Pi. This video is to highlight basic features of the JGRASP for new students to AP Computer Science. This video will cover most of the key features you'll be using in the first part of this course. JGRASP is a fairly simple IDE or Integrated Development Environment that will help you get familiar with Java, its syntax, spotting errors, and how to debug. Once you master these basic concepts, for those of you that would like to try a more advanced uh, IDE, you can try something like Eclipse. This channel also has a video on a few useful features in that tool as well. The first part is the icon. You'll find this on your desktop or perhaps somewhere in your uh, start menu or even in uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, simply click on that and up pops uh, JGRASP. Now we've talked about uh, this is your workspace right now where all your files will be. Uh, we talked about it in the environment setup to make sure that you're pointing in the right space. If you're not, uh, these little icons will help you navigate to the right space. So either I can, you know, um, go back a, a back a folder or I can, uh, you know, go up a, up a level or I can even navigate to get, I can either create a new, a, a new folder or I can, you know, I can, uh, type directly in here to get to the folder that I want. Here we have some simple Java Java programs that we'll be working with. Uh, the first thing I like to do is let me pull up, let me just, let's just create a new uh, file here. File new Java. And suddenly you see a whole bunch of new icons here that are available to you. And we'll kind of go through that. Let's just put a little uh, boilerplate program here. File hello world. Say I've just typed this up, and all it is is just a simple program. Now, say I want to save this. I can either hit save file uh, because I'm in this folder. It'll probably it'll prompt me to save to this folder. And the default is you don't notice that this window that comes up will be this window that we have right here. And also, it even it was smart enough to even say, hey, you know what? We should probably name this hello world .java because the name of the class in here is called hello world. So I will do that. Hit save. And it's done. Uh, a couple other things uh, in the icon is your edit. So let's kind of go through the icons over here. You have your opening a folder or saving a file. You've probably seen this in other programs. You have your editing icons here where I want to cut, copy, and paste and undo. So if I wanted to you know, cut this word right here, I can cut it out. If I wanted to paste it back in, I'm sorry, this is copied. If I wanted to paste it back in, if I wanted to you know, copy that out. Or maybe I want to undo what I just did. I can hit this undo button here. Uh, these things are, are pretty, uh, we don't have to worry about these two CSDs, but um, one thing that's really key uh, when you start editing, when, when you start doing debugging, uh, you'll get error messages down here and it'll point to a line in your code. Now for simple programs, you can probably count one, two, three, but it's good, to, it's good to have the line numbers of your program. And that's what this icon here does, is it toggles the line numbers. So if you say you have a, a problem on line seven, um, we can go right to that. And we'll actually get to that in this video later on. Uh, we'll have a couple other things that you probably won't care about right now. This is basically uh, next level stuff where you're generating diagrams and US, uh, uh, USD models, uh, UML class diagrams. But the, these three icons will be your friends here. The compile, run, and debug. Now, compile, what, what, what are, let's, let's focus on this little running man right here. So if I wanted to create this program, you'll notice a couple things. I'm going to hit the running man and let it run. You see it's, it's compiling, and then, it's, then it ran and out, print, and out printed Hello World. You saw a couple. You saw a couple messages. You'll see, you, you saw here down here in this, in this tab, it started to compile it. So it, took the, it, take the, it takes this .java file and creates a binary uh, class file, that uh, the machine code that Java understands. Notice this class file wasn't here before. If I hit delete, it'll, it'll delete the file, and then um, I can try and run that again. Now, this compile, this run thing, this, this run button will do two things at once. You notice it compiled it and it ran it. Uh, sometimes when you're running this, you'll find that the program behaves differently than what you just modified it. And sometimes what that is is the IDE gets out of sync. So that's where this button comes in, the compile file. It actually will do nothing but just change it from a, uh, something that's human readable to something that's you know a binary file. 
And you notice if I hit this, you'll watch the compile messages kind of crank through it. it creates a hello world class file and it's ready to be run without compiling it. So you can, it's your choice if you want to, um, if you want to do it all on one, one button, most, most of you will choose to just compile it to hit that little running man and it'll you notice it's compiling and then it'll run it for you. Or if you get, if your program looks kind of funky, you would just uh, re force a recompile before running it. A uh, last thing is the debug button and we'll kind of get to that at the end of this video. So let's clear things out. Uh, what also, this kind of uh, is a good time to segue into these uh, tabs below. Now you notice that here's the hello world file that we're working on right now. If I wanted to, I can click on this and we can toggle back and forth between working files. Now as you keep working in this editor, you'll see it kind of stack up. So you'll want to be kind of diligent about closing these things out and getting rid of that. Or you can either right click on it and hit close. Okay. Then there are these two tabs under underneath those those uh, file tabs, and that will tell you when uh, it's compiling. And anytime you have an error, let's kind of put a little error code here, uh, an error in my code here. Anytime I do an error, it'll show up in this compile messages, and it'll, and you notice here, it'll say, "Hey, on line 16, I have a missing uh, semicolon." Well, I can go right uh, rather than have it. Once your programs get long, you'll find a find it troubling to find which line it is. I go right to line 16 and I say, oh, there's something missing right here. And even in the the compiler is even courteous enough to tell you, oh, there's a problem right after this too. So I know that, hey, I'm missing this semicolon here. I can clear this out, recompile it, and lo and behold, everything is fine. It compiles fine. So that's a nice little uh, useful feature here, especially when you're uh, having uh, errors whenever you have compile time syntax errors. Uh, the other thing is the run IO. So this is the output. So after it compiles, uh, you'll notice that it jumped from the compile right to the run and it prints out the output. So if you have, and you'll see this in our, in the next eight you know, chapters, the rest of the class, we'll see, you'll get familiar with system out print line or system out print. That's what gets printed out to the screen. Now we can, we won't get into uh, we're right, right now we're just covering the basics of programming, but we can get to really fancy uh, uh, graphical user interfaces uh, later on. But right now we're just crunching numbers and out and spitting out output. Okay, the next thing I would like to kind of show you is these tabs over here. That's the the three. There's four of them: uh, browse, find, debug, and workbench. We won't really get into Workbench, but uh, we're, you're already familiar with this browse where you can navigate up and down and get to get to files and folders. The second thing is uh, find. If I wanted to find keywords in in the in the file, say I wanted to find you know variable three, I can find it, and it'll find all it'll find all. If I wanted to do a replace, say I, I misspelled it, I don't like the word var two. I want to replace it with you know say you know Bulbasaur. I can do a replace all, and sure enough, everywhere in the code, it, it replaced it with Bulbasaur. Let me undo that. So this is a nice. This is nice when you want to do mass editing or you want to find things in your file. Last thing is the debug, and we're going to go through that in our debug uh, uh, at the end of this video. Last thing I want to show you are some key features of the menu options here that aren't covered in the the icons that are really uh, nice to have. Uh, one is the, uh, we've already talked about the line numbers, so if you don't remember this, you can always go to view and hit line numbers, and that'll kind of go back and forth between the line numbers. Uh, there's also the comment and uncomment. Say I want to, say I have a whole chunk of code that I want to bypass for some reason. I don't really care about what the values are. I just want to comment a chunk of it out. If I went to um, edit and comment, or I can hit control slash, It'll automatically comment that chunk of code out, so I don't. It will the the compile the compiler will skip right over that that chunk of code. If I want to make that chunk of code available again, I just hit uncomment, and it'll make that chunk of code available again. Uh, another piece is a split view. Uh, when your code gets long and you're going to have to scroll, you probably want to see what you you know some of these de declarations up at the top of your code, but you really want to start editing it down here at the bottom. That's a, a split view would be really handy for this. 
uh, I'm going to do like a horizontal split so I can necessarily make changes to the code and it affects both windows so I can go further on down on my code and make changes and not have it here on the screen so that way I can I can take a look at what's over here at the top of my code it's the same file but it allows me to look at two parts of the file at the same time so this is kind of a more advanced and you, this may come in handy later on uh, last let me turn this back off last uh, is color settings. I'm not a fan of the white background, but a lot of the IDEs start you off in white. So one of the one of the settings is um, changing the colors. Out here under settings, I can go to colors, and it gives me this kind of weird uh, options. And I can change the color, of the text, the parentheses, string, uh, background color. So here I'm just going to uncheck the defaults, and by default, it's kind of the it's closer to what I like. And let's hit apply and notice how I have now a uh, easier on the eyes white seems to have a lot more uh, eye strain than black so I like a, a nice black background but sometimes maybe I don't like the string color uh, maybe I maybe want the string color to be you know orange I hit I change that color hit apply and suddenly you notice the string went from blue to orange uh, I like the blue so I'll just go back to blue for right now okay apply and sure enough, they go back to blue. Okay, so I kind of went over the over the different features. Now it goes into the uh, the key thing about uh, debugging and tracing. So this will become really handy as you start getting to more and more complex uh, programs. Is being able to trace and debug through your through your code. So I'm going to introduce a couple uh, concepts to you, like a breakpoint. Uh, so what I can do when, I, when I'm debugging, I can step through the code line by line and watch how the computer runs through my code. So here, here's another thing that you'll be asked to do is to trace through a program and output the vet and kind of in a trace variable. So you know at what point the variables, uh, the values are in variables. So here's, here's a, a trace table. And you'll notice in this, this chunk of code I have over here, um, I have four variables. I have IVAR1, 2, 3, and DVAR4. So here I have a table where I can place the values as it steps through code. So I'm going to take this code, I'll just to show you that it's, it's the same code, and paste it over here. So I'm going to start tr tracing through and debugging my code at this point. So I'm going to place a, what they call a breakpoint. I'm going to hit that right here and there. So if I if you hover over it, you'll see a little stop sign here. That'll that'll tell the code, hey, when you get this when you get to this line, stop. So let's let's debug it and get to that point here. So we're compiling it again, we're debugging it, and we ran, notice that there's the line that's highlighted is right here. So we're right now at this code, uh, and we have over here variables and evals. So as we as I step through this. You're going to notice some. Here, let me. You're going to notice. Whoops. There we go. You're going to notice um, certain values sticking up here in the variables. So here are a couple thing, a couple buttons you will use in debugging. Uh, step four selected thread. Step in selected thread. Uh, step out and then uh, pause it and then run it again. Right now we're just going to do a step four. When we get into functions later on, we'll, we'll use a step in, but right now all you really need is this uh, down. Now, another key key is if you hit Alt down, it'll also step down, so it's just if I was clicking this button. So notice I clicked the button once and it moved to the next line. It also created, I mean, even though we declared it, we didn't, we didn't actually see the values here because we didn't actually instantiate, we didn't instantiate the variable. We didn't stick a, a value in that holder. And here, notice once I get past this, IVAR now has the value 50. Watch what happens when I go to the next line. I set IVAR to 25. So here, as I'm going through in a trace table, I would say 50 on the first line. Then I'd go 25 on the trace table. Now let's step through the next line. What's the next line do? Okay, it sets DVAR 4 to 14.5. 
So you can see right here, 14.5. I'll stick that right here, 14.5. I'm going to go to the next line. So now IVAR3 has all this crunched into 325. So I'll stick 325 in the trace table. Now I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, so the next one I changed. I've, you notice here that IVAR2 is now red because that's what's changed since the, la since the last uh, line that was run. So it used to be IVAR25, but now the value is 2. So I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to strike this out here because IVAR no longer is 25. The value is now 2 and set 2 in the next table. So here you can see at this point in the code, it's 52, 325, and 14.5. Let's step through again. Now, IVAR3 changed to 100, so we're going to change IVAR3 to 100. Step through again. Now we set DVAR to 2.25. We'll set that here in the trace table. 2.25, and then we're done. It outputs the value here. You can't see it because it's great. You can't see it because it's black. But I don't know if you, if I highlight it here, you can see that it output it here. Let me change that. Yeah, so you can see here that it changed it back. So everything is good. Okay. One other thing you can do while you're debugging. Let me hit finish this out in the let the program end. One of the last things you can do is um, if I'm debugging, and I'll, I'll run the debug statement again here, I can also go to this eval statement. Let me let me step through a couple times and let me show you what I can do with this. So let's step through the power of the eval. Okay, so I've gotten through and I've set ivar1 equals ivar2. In the eval statement, I can do something like this. I can say ivar1 var times 2. And it will automatically, because I'm paused at this time, because I'm paused at this type in the time in the code, it'll actually execute that for me without having to put it in code. It'll do it for me on the fly. If I change it to three, it'll change it here in the eval statement. So I can put statements in here, and it will do that that statement for me. So rather than just doing the variables, I can actually kind of do a couple a couple steps ahead. Maybe I want to know what IVAR, maybe I want to know what 2 times IVAR1 is before I actually hit that line in code. I can actually create an expression statement and see that, oh, I bet you IVAR3 is going to be 100 when it gets to that point. So this may be a little more advanced uh, for right now, but this, this comes in handy later on to be able to execute code without having it actually run in lines of code. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching.